Just a little over one year ago, I was sitting in my house in Spain watching a YouTube video from a small creator where he talked about the Amazon Influencer Program. It is 100% the most impactful YouTube video I've ever watched. While I was still watching the video, I applied for the program on another tab on my computer and was accepted. The next day, I filmed my first three videos, and a few days later, I was officially accepted into the program for making shoppable videos. For those who don't know, you have to get your first three videos approved by a human, and I have another video that covers best practices for getting your videos approved if you need help with that. I filmed another 20 videos over that next week before heading back to the US. I was somewhat limited because I was in Spain and the products there aren't the same, so I was mostly only able to film things that I brought with me. Every day I would check the earnings page only to find that I hadn't earned anything. Then came the magic moment that I won't soon forget. I was on a bus headed home from Miami to Orlando. I was looking at my earnings page when I realized that at the top right corner was a drop down. I didn't know that what I had been looking at for the last week had been my associates earning page and not my influencer page. This is a common mistake for a lot of new influencers. They think they haven't earned anything and it's because they are looking at the wrong page. So I swap to the correct one and I gasp and throw my hand over my mouth as I see that I've earned a little over $40. Now you might be like, okay, Nicole, but $40 isn't life changing. But what this meant was that it worked. At this point, I had averaged about $2 per video I made and that was just in the first week. Those same videos I filmed a year ago still have the potential to earn on any given day. One year later, I'm sitting at just over 550 videos. So today I'm going to tell you what I've earned and learned over the last year of being an influencer. And before I get into breaking down the numbers, I also want to mention that I have done this very part-time. Sometimes I've gone a whole month with only making a couple of videos just because I've been busy with other life commitments. What I share with you today should be very reasonable for anyone to do, even if you have a lot going on. And if you have time to put a whole lot more into it, I think you could easily double, triple, or quadruple what I've been able to earn. This is by far the easiest money I've ever made in my life. Okay, so let's go over numbers first. I started in April of 2023. My first clicks and views were on April 11th, and by April 13th, I had my first earnings. Throughout the remaining month of April, I made $73.85. I uploaded a total of 32 videos over the course of that month. In May, my total earnings were $277.92. I uploaded an additional 64 videos in the month of May, so averaging about two videos per day. The month of June was a bummer, and this is where I first learned about the roller coaster ride of being an Amazon influencer. I only earned $186.41 that month. Talk about a wake up call. Now, I only uploaded 12 videos that month, but I wasn't the only one with low earnings that month. Amazon is always testing new things and changing up how they display videos, and that month was rough for a lot of people. Now, July is a month where they have prime days, so I was hopeful it would turn around. I'm sure glad I stuck it out because this is where my numbers began to be significant. In the month of July, I made $743.06. Now, I also put in the time filming 96 videos that month, averaging about three videos per day. In the month of August, I earned $526.54. I added 76 videos that month. In the month of September, I earned $542.12 and had my first $100 day that month. Which, it's great to have a $100 day, but overall, sales took a dip that month. If it hadn't been for that one expensive product that sold, I would have made just over $400 that month. That month, I added 68 videos. In the month of October, I earned $486.57. At this point, the momentum was feeling frustrating. I'm adding more and more videos, but hanging right around that $400 to $500 mark each month. In October, I added 40 videos. Now comes November, the Christmas shopping season, and let me tell you, it does not disappoint. I earned $922.50, getting so close to $1,000. That month I added 63 videos, which means I was posting about two videos per day. You would think that December might be a bigger month, but I came in exactly $100 less than November, 
at $822.65. December, I only added 36 videos, which is just about one video per day. Then came the new year. I was pretty worried about January. I knew sales would slump with the holiday season over, and I was worried about a lot of returns. But generally speaking, returns didn't spike that much. My earnings in January were $692.70, but I also only posted six videos that month. That means in January, I only put in about an hour of time, but still got paid almost $700. You can see how this time investment is really beginning to pay off. In the month of February, I earned $724.27. That month I added 21 more videos. Then came March, just under a year after I first began, when I finally broke the $1,000 mark, earning $1,148.46. I'll talk about it more in a minute, but this isn't because sales were up consistently. This is the first month I had three different days with sales over $100, and one of those days was my first $200 plus dollar day. This has more to do with specific item sales, and I'll get more into that in a minute. I only added 14 videos that month. Now, in April, I brought in $995.54 and also only added 14 videos that month. But that would wrap up one year in the program. If you want to take it to exactly April 11th instead of including the whole month, it would have been $299.80. So one year from the day I entered the program from April 11th, 2023 to April 11th, 2024 comes to a total of $7,446.85. During that time, I uploaded a total of 540 videos. Now, 540 videos is not nothing, but let's talk about the time investment and then I'll tell you the most important things I've learned during the process. It's hard to say exactly how much time I've spent making these review videos, but I can tell you that it's nothing like the amount of time I put into these YouTube videos. My YouTube videos are generally about 10 minutes long, but I spend about five to 10 hours making each one. My Amazon videos, on the other hand, are so easy. I just sit in front of the camera with the product, film an unscripted review for between 30 seconds to two minutes. Then I edit the video in Adobe Rush on my phone. All this usually entails is clipping off the end of the video when I get up to turn off the camera. And then I usually take a screenshot of the start of the video when I'm smiling with the product so I can use that as my thumbnail. Then I just open the Amazon app and upload the video, tag the product, and I'm done. On average, the total time I spend on each video is probably around 10 minutes. Now, in the beginning, we used to have to upload these from a computer. When they added the ability to do it from the Amazon app, it made it so much faster. Now, some reviews, I may film B-roll and have to edit just a bit more, and others may take me only a total of five minutes to do everything. That's why I'm saying an average of 10 minutes. So if I filmed 540 videos at an average of 10 minutes, that means in one year, I spent about 5,400 minutes on these videos. That comes to a total of 90 hours exactly. So if you take the $7,446.85 and divide it by 90 hours, that comes to a total of $82.74 per hour. I don't know about you, but that's more than double what I usually earn at any other job and with a whole lot of flexibility. If you're an Amazon influencer, let me know in the comments what you think you're making per hour. Now, does that mean that every person will earn around that for the amount of time they put in? No. So let's talk about some of the variables and I'll tell you what has made the biggest difference for me. Let's start with the change that has made the most significant impact for me. That is when I added high cost items to my video portfolio. Now I've never purchased items just for the purpose of making a review, but when I buy things, especially expensive items, I try to make sure they're available on Amazon. In December, I purchased an item that cost me between three and $4,000. Now this is an item that I needed. The thing is, it's not that it's a huge seller, but every time I make a sale from that item, I'm earning between $120 and $180. That's not nothing. So if you take my regular sales of, let's say $700 per month, and you tack on three days of making sales over $100 each day, well, that's a significant boost. 
I'm generally a budget person who doesn't spend a lot, but in the last six months, I've been making some significant purchases for my new home and my camper van. These big ticket items are bringing in some big days for me. So I think one of my new goals is to have enough big ticket items that I get close to selling at least one big ticket item per day. I have a couple of medium ticket items that bring me about $40 to $60 per sale, and those are pretty significant too. Now, I'm not recommending that you go spend money to make money. I'm just saying if you have a way to identify big ticket items in your own home that you need to purchase or that you can review in the home of friends or family, this can be hugely significant. I've also stopped wasting my time with tiny items. I'd rather make multiple videos of a big ticket item than waste my time on a $5 item. Don't get me wrong, it all adds up and a lot of sales of a tiny item can make a huge impact. I'm just saying my time focuses way more on higher priced items. Another thing I think is important to note is that if you review products that are not high quality or that need to be tried on for size, you should expect returns. One of my best sellers was a pair of Adidas tennis shoes that I've worn for years. I'd make two or three dollars on every sale and for a long time had multiple sales every day, but they were also my most returned item, not because of the quality, but because shoes in general are not going to be the right fit for a lot of people. I've only had a really high priced item returned once, and let me tell you, that hurt. Another important note to make is that even though the return for the time invested is huge, I also don't have access to an unlimited amount of items. You really have to start to get creative when you run out of your own items. Let me tell you a few things that I've done. You heard me mention before that I was averaging some months about two to three videos per day, but most of my videos were done in batches. For example, I'd gather about 10 to 15 items I'd want to review and I would get myself ready, put my makeup on, and sit down to record all of them one after the other. So to film 10 videos might take me about 20 minutes. Then I could spend about an hour editing and uploading some or all of them. Sometimes I would just knock them all out at once and sometimes I would upload two or three a day as I had time. Another thing is that I travel quite a bit. So there were some months when I would film as many videos as I could, but I saved the editing and uploading for when I was in Spain and didn't have access to film other videos. Now, I mentioned that my preferred method is to just sit in front of the camera with the item. This is the fastest, and also I do think it builds trust to show your face. But sometimes if I'm going to bug friends or family to film some of their stuff, I don't want to bother them with setting up and sitting down to film, so I'll literally just record the b-roll of their item while I'm standing there having a conversation with them. Then later, when I sit down to edit, I'll mute the initial file, plug in the microphone to my phone and record a voiceover in the editor. This still doesn't make much more work, but it keeps me from being an inconvenience to others. The other nice thing about B-roll is that you can make multiple videos out of it with different voiceovers. When I need to do a really thorough demonstration, I'll also use B-roll in the corner of some of my talking videos. For example, if I'm reviewing cookware, I'll be talking about it and showing the cookware in a new state, but I'll add B-roll in one of the top corners of the cookware actually being used. It can take a little more work, but for nice items, it's definitely a professional touch. I think another huge thing for me is better thumbnails. For a long time, I was just uploading the videos and going with whatever crazy thumbnail was already added, but this is also why I like filming myself with the product. I always start the video by holding up the product and smiling. Then when I'm editing, I just grab a quick screenshot. Sometimes I'll add text on top of it as well, just from the editor in my phone. Better looking thumbnails seem to really make a difference. Another way to make gains is through videos for Amazon sellers. I don't do videos for less than $20 now, just because most items that are sent are not that great and I'll never get the return for my time and commissions. I will say though that on occasion, I will accept an expensive product in exchange for a review. I did make several hundred dollars over the holiday season just reselling items that Amazon sellers sent to me, but that can get a little out of hand and definitely isn't worth it for cheap items. 
One other thing I'll mention is the review itself. Be sure to answer important questions. What would you want to know if you were watching the review of a product? If you're not answering questions, they're going to keep clicking on other videos until the shopper gets what they're looking for. So be as helpful as you can and be honest. If I don't like an item, I don't review it. I think it's important to build trust and just to operate any business with integrity. On that note, my other business is this YouTube channel, which currently doesn't pay nearly as much as Amazon. So help me out, like this video and subscribe to join me every day where travel and adventure build financial freedom. I can't wait to see where your dreams will take you.